so we've come to the last part where we're going to populate our particles along that tunnel um, so before anything else if you haven't saved your project now is a good time to save it I have so let's review and take a look at what's happening with the particle system okay so how do we make um, the particles exist before that frame so the, this is how I'm doing it I'm going to start the particle emission process way before the first frame so I'm gonna select my peak cloud go and adjust that uh, emission start to say maybe a hundred frames before so I'm going just going to see what's actually happening um, I'm going to change my start time to a negative 100 so I'm going to see what's happening going to back to start time of negative 100 so you can see that immediately after I've changed this um, my software becomes sluggish that's because it's calculating back 100 frames and whatever we see now is the result of accumulation of 100 frames that's why it be it's becoming sluggish so it, if I move my playhead to 200 it would calculate backwards 300 frames to arrive at what we're going to be seeing in 200 frames so that's the way max works so um, so there's a reason why uh, we set our speed up set our path follow so we get that correct behavior in the direction is flowing we get the we get the correct speed with the variation and then now we come to the painful part of uh, letting it calculate excessively like a hundred frames before okay yeah it's not that bad actually so okay so I'm gonna go up to a negative hundred frames I'm gonna set my time range so um, if I find that for example if I find that my computer can't keep up with the amount of particles what I'm probably going to do is to just quickly reduce the number of my particles to say like two okay so that's ten times less of the load and as you can see still a lot of particles so I'm gonna just put it to one okay and I can also uh, get max to display like ten percent of the particles that are going to be rendered so actually what we're just looking out for is um, the speed the behavior okay and the the, the direction of that animation so once we're happy we can bump out uh, that value and then just leave it uh, to maybe do a quick preview make sure everything's okay and then we do a, a, a render and then we can go for coffee or we can just go go and sleep okay so um, I'm just looking peering under the before frame zero to see what's actually happening okay you can see that um, again um, there's just one the first batch of particles and then uh, it doesn't emit anymore okay so I'm gonna just troubleshoot a little bit you can see that um, emitter start and emitting stops at frame zero so actually I want it to keep populating right so you can see that it, it's sort of like started emitting more and more and then at frame zero sort of like stop the meeting and my sort of path follow uh, kicks in so that's something else we, we got to address but now uh, let's address that path follow first and you can see that the start frame is zero so I'm gonna that's why uh, my particles are emitting but they're not moving so they increase in size but they're just static until frame zero where it kicks in so I'm gonna do a negative hundred okay so immediately when now we move our timeline and the playhead we can see that my blood cells are traveling down that tunnel uh, but very soon uh, because of the other problem that we were having at frame zero it stopped emitting so I have a breakage in my supply of blood cells 
So I'm gonna go to P Cloud and where it says emitter stops at zero, I want it to keep emitting right up to frame 200. So now we'll have our continuous supply of blood cell. Okay, and sort of like um, because we have tweaked where our blood cells would stop and uh, live up until you can sort of see okay, some blood cells start to die even before they reach the end of the tunnel so right now I may want to address that so that has to do with the travel time okay so I might want to give it a faster travel time like 225 or 215 okay so take a look a little bit uh, again you can see that uh, the earliest blood cells that die off uh, I'm seeing one here uh, this guy so you can see ah oh, okay so th that neighbor this guy so I'm just taking that as a reference because I see it die inside that uh, inside the tunnel so I'm going to uh, increase until it sort of like dies around here so I'm going to uh, decrease my travel time like 205 maybe so okay so now I'm seeing my well my, my blood cells die around here so maybe it's like 195 okay so a lot of values will change other values so when I'm doing this I may have some cells inside uh, intersecting into each other and, and, and all that. Okay, so now I can be quite sure that my earliest uh, disappearance of cells happens here, so maybe too much, so 198 or 200. Okay, so I'm happy with this. So again, after doing that change, we have to go back to the camera view and see if everything is still working like they, they're supposed to okay so we're just interested in actually frame zero so I can actually go back to frame zero if I wanted to okay so and start seeing what's happening here Okay, there may be a point when actually you would see blood, uh, red blood cells, although they're traveling along the tunnel, but uh, because of that, uh, the undulations of the shapes that we, we're having, uh, they may eat into the geometry. In such a case, uh, the way to fix that would be to reduce the size of that emitting radius of volume. Okay, so let's say uh, this guy maybe traveled too far and it's intersecting with the wall so all I have to do is just go back to my peak cloud okay and lower down that radius so when the particles are born it's like more uh, removed uh, and far further away from, from the wall okay but of course we are trying to strike a balance here if we bond the particles to cluster together in a smaller space they may start intersecting with each other again so it's a lot of hard work and uh, a lot of like um, checking that everything looks correct in the viewport. Say I'm 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 happy with this. Okay, um, the some things. So we're we're basically done here. But we uh, there are some things that I might want to address. That is when my camera starts. I feel that I I could be seeing more of the blood cells. But that's just an artistic decision. But you can see that there are parts of the framing where you, you just see just looking at the sides of the wall uh, of the walls right so and then at, at the very end you can see that the camera sort of like just goes to the exit and there are no more tunnels left so we want a framing at the end where we can still see some tunnel walls so one thing is uh, widening that uh, focal length would help okay so first thing I'm just going to go to my camera select camera Okay, I'm gonna 
increase my lens mm uh, sorry increase my field of view so I should drop that mm let's say 20 okay so I get to see more of the tunnel and sort of uh, I get to look uh, sort of centralize my camera instead of I was just looking at like part of that so and you might want to shape your tunnel such that you sort of can see uh, you sort of can't see the ending from the first frame so I've I have mine like on the very first frame I, and I'm sort of like already seeing that uh, that opening out there okay so that's not very nice artistically because of my white lens angle I can still see the sides of the tunnel even at like 180 so if we had the, our 45 mm okay we, we would lose the side of the tunnel very early on so I'm just gonna put back to maybe 20 mm so uh, and a wider angle of the camera lens gives us a more exaggerated perspective which could be good uh, okay, so here again I have some uh, intersecting particles. So I'm going to go back here and randomize a little bit, uh, maybe that variation. So 12.2 maybe. Okay, so because we are at the last frame, it always has to look back to negative 100 and starts emitting the particles and then calculate what we're going to see at the last frame so um, 12.8 so um, my ob my objective is just to like you know vary the speed so that they are they are further apart from each other okay so instead of increasing that uh, that percentage variation I'm going to drop uh, to decrease the percentage variation okay so now they are like sort of like apart from each other but again I got to check my whole sequence to check that everybody's like happy and not eating into each other and of course checking that the camera is not eating into the lens so so not too easy okay I, I may want to just uh, still scale down that uh, particle size a little bit more so 0 0.1 1.0 maybe okay so a little bit sometimes it just makes a difference okay I, I shall not okay because uh, you, you sort of like get get my drift right so between all these values you're supposed to make them behave right at the last frame my camera is not uh, as has ran out of tunnel so my camera is being driven by a point helper so I'm going to select my point helper and under the motion panel I still have my path constraint make sure that it's the active position controller and I'm going to make that last key I'm going to turn on my auto key to change to update that value percentage along path I'm going to just make it like 95% okay, so, so what that does is uh, telling the max that I don't want the camera to actually finish at the exact end of my tunnel okay I'm gonna pull it back a, a bit and say like I'm gonna finish at like 90% of my entire path so I never fully travel along it okay so maybe 85 okay so sort of like I get my tunnel so I'm going to turn off auto key play that through a bit yeah so that's my ending okay so don't forget that uh, the way that we've set up our camera it's actually the point helper bringing the camera along for a ride so my camera is actually keyable so that makes it quite convenient for example um, because of the way the spline is is banking uh, my last frame is doesn't have the mouth of the tunnel centralized 
So if I actually wanted it, I could have actually set a key, okay, or have an animated offset of that camera, rotate that a little bit so that it's the the tunnel is centralized. Okay, hope you get what I mean. Okay, so gonna undo that, uh, and also um, sometimes you remember where the camera was going through that blood cell because my camera is free to travel away from that helper uh, away from that point helper I could set a key so that the camera sort of like avoids that blood cell and then s somewhere further down it goes back to uh, zero 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 from the space so that it's traveling again at the exact position facing the exact same way where the point helper is facing so we have great um, flexibility here so if I could offset my camera and make sure that it doesn't crash into a cell or whatever then the only thing that I'm gonna be worrying about is that the cells do not intersect between themselves and do not intersect into the wall of the tunnel so now um, we sort of come to the end of the the tutorial uh, I'm gonna quickly show you uh, the flexibility that we have uh, again with the spline uh, tunnel rig so because we build the whole tunnel and the path and the forces to all depend on that spline okay, we can have the art director tell us that he wants to change the shape of the tunnel and that would be just easy because all we need to do is to change the shape of that spline object the path spline okay, and select the vertex I'm just going to show how, how everything's going to update select the vertex change the shape so you can see that it's sort of like becomes laggy but you can see that uh, the shape of our tunnel is changing which in turn drives the geometry which in turn also drives the path of the camera which in turn also drives how the particles are being uh, traveling along the tunnel which is actually the path follow the relying on that, that shape of that spline to push the particle along okay so that is the power and the flexibility of um, procedural based uh, objects having live connections with each other okay I'm gonna put that back now okay I can actually lengthen it and I or I can actually shorten it uh, which in that case I would have to reposition my particle emitter to again be at the opening of that new particle uh, the new part, new tunnel shape okay so um, thanks for watching uh, hope you've learned something or you know at least found out something that you didn't found out before from this tutorial uh, I'm Patrick I'll see you again soon in the next tutorial so hope you enjoy it bye